Hey guys, welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about Helm charts, which are an easier way to deploy uh, Kubernetes, which is kind of a management service for uh, Docker containers. So let's let's get started. So the first thing you have to do, so it's back to a regular project. We have our front end, our back end, and we're going to create a new folder, which I already created. Um, and here it's where the chart is going to be. And here we're going to have a chart.yaml file, which is basically kind of like the chart uh, information. We're going to have a values.yaml file. You could have a readme in there. Um, and then you have templates. This is where you put kind of like the information about the application, like for each one of the uh, services that you're going to be deploying. And then you have the service. So service I'll talk about them later is basically uh, how Kubernetes like knows to attach it to that app and send stuff to that app. Um, so yeah, let's get started. So we're going to start with the chart. So let's go through the basics. So as I said, this is a basic chart. You can obviously make it way more complex. Uh, this just to get you started. So API version, this is a Kubernetes uh, version, sorry, the Helm version. Uh, for now it's V1. Um, App version, that's the version of your application. Uh, we're going to start with, it can be any string, just to keep it simple, we're going to start with uh, 1.0, then a description, it's any string, it's just kind of a description for people to, to that are going to be using this chart to know. And then the name, name is usually the same as the folder, or folder is the same as the chart, whatever you want to call it. And then this is the chart version. Uh, which is different than the app version. So app version is the version of your code that you're deploying. Chart version is the version of the chart. So the version actually doesn't change unless you're changing the shape of the chart. So like adding more services or adding more stuff to it. But for example, if you change some code into your backend uh, service, uh, you just change the app version you don't change the uh the chart version but if you add another microservice like let's say you add uh i don't know uh user login service uh then that that will change your chart um so and that that is kind of uh shown also with the helm instructions that we're going to go over so basically uh let me just Copy this into uh, here. So basically, we have the uh, for installing a release, you do Helm install and the chart name. If you want to upgrade it, so that's when you change your code, but you haven't changed the chart. Uh, then you do the release name and then the chart name. And then for rollback, uh, you do the release and the revision number that you want to roll back. So let's say you deploy a new version of your code that has a bug and you want to quickly roll back. It takes one command on Helm to be able to do it and it will go back as normal. And if you want to see the release history, uh, you get it from here, which helps you get the revision number. So, um, so that covers kind of like the chart. Then we have the values. So I went ahead and like, pre-populated this, uh, which are values that we're going to use. Right now it doesn't kind of make sense, but the whole point of the values is that it's for your uh, templates. So this can change. So if you're going from, I don't know, pre-prod to prod or from different areas or different things, you, you only have to change the values file in YAML, uh, uh, sorry, the values YAML file. Um, and then your actual, you don't have to change anything to the template. So let's say, I don't know, like you're changing the version number of your image. Uh, instead of having to then go and change it in all the files, you just change it here and uh, we'll see how it goes through. Um, and then we're going to go through uh, the backend one to, and let's put them side by side so we can see. Uh, 
what maps to what. So here we start with the metadata. So I like calling it so when you create the release is what you're gonna see. So I like having the release name so we know what it is. Uh, and then dash deployment and here we're doing values of container the backend name. So if we go here, this is values, so container, and then backend name. So that's gonna grab cubes backend. Um, and this is the app name. We're actually gonna use that for the service and namespace. So in here, actually I wanna call this out. So our namespace is called dev coding for Mingo in this one, which if you remember from our previous video, um, Create Azure Resource. It's the same namespace. Oh, it's not going to appear here because it was an input that we put in. When we created the dev spaces, that's the same namespace that, that we use. So in this case, this values, it's going to deploy to that namescape, names, namespace so we can use Azure uh, dev spaces with it. So, like, let's say we deploy everything and then we want to try a new version of. Uh, our front end, we can use the back end that has been deployed in this namespace. So that's why we use this one. Obviously, for production, you would change the namespace and hopefully the cluster as well. You shouldn't be using the same cluster. Um, and then this is for replicas. Well, well, let's keep going back through the back end time. Oh, I guess replicas is next. So this is the amount of replicas you want. So uh, Kubernetes is pretty smart and it'll. Uh, spread your replicas across your node. So if one node goes down, uh, your application doesn't go down and like the number of replicas are still there and like you'll create new replicas. So this is kind of like the number of replicas you want for backend we've set three, for front end we set two. And we can make this scalable. Right now we're hard coding values. Eventually we're gonna make it more scalable. Um, so then uh, the app again, and then uh, the environment, we pass environment development. This can be used uh, as you pass information, like in development, do something, and in production, do another thing. And then in here, we're passing the information of the containers. So uh, once again, the name is the same all across. Then the image, we're passing the backend image, which is the one that we created in the ACR video. Uh, that is in our ACR uh, place, and then we're passing the tag, so that's basically the version. Uh, you could do latest. I don't, I, I don't like doing latest because in here you're very being very, you're showing basically what 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 version you deployed instead of just pulling the latest image pull policy. So in this one we set it up to always. The default, so if you actually don't declare it here, the default is if not present. So basically, it'll only pull down the image if that node doesn't have the image. In this case, we just did it always so I can talk about it. But basically, if not present, you will kind of pull it only if it's needed, which will decrease your networking costs and your ACR costs. So, but always will make sure that you always have the freshest uh, image. Or you should be doing that by tags, but yeah. Then ports. So this just what port you open in Docker, and we just put it here. Um, right now we left it at 80. That was the default, and same app host is here, and environment is here. So then let's and front end is going to be the same. So I'm not really going to spend time on it. Obviously, it just changes to front end name and so on, and front end replicas, but you kind of get the idea. Service. So, there's um, a few types of services. Uh, you have cluster IP, this is kind of like the one that we're using here, which is internal. So, only other Kubernetes, uh, other things inside your Kubernetes thing will be able to hit it. So, um, this is kind of like for your backend and stuff, and Kubernetes kind of keeps your DNS of where your nodes are, and it'll do the load balancing for you and everything. So you just say like hit the backend, and it'll 
check where the nodes are and hit each one of them instead of sorry not nodes the microservices since the pods sorry I keep messing it up uh, and it'll know know where to hit them and keeps the DNS of the pods so it's kind of like the way to do it and you have node port um, that's an so node in Kubernetes is actually the machines that have that are going that that are running the the Kubernetes underneath it. So that one basically uses the machine port, uh, the machine IP address, the static IP address, and a port, and it maps that port into your um, it, it maps that port into that service. Um, and then load balancer, uh, we're gonna use that in our next video. The load balancer one. This one is basically it uses your cloud provider's load balancer and pushes it into that service. Uh, so that's what we're gonna use for the external coming in, but internal we're gonna use cluster IP. And then there is external name that you can pass it that if it's hitting in a specific name. Uh, but right now let's go through cluster. So the name, so this is the backend service. Um, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, the app, uh, so it's the same. Uh, then the namespace, same like as all the other ones, go to Flamingo. Uh, then selector, this is what app you want to uh, be, what app you want to be hitting. So in this case, we want to be hitting the, the backend app that we created. And then we have to pass the service port, so that's what port we wanted the service to listen into, which in this case is 9368, which was just a random high number I came up with. And then the backend port, so what port you wanted to uh, route into. So we open port 80, so it has to be port 80. But as I said, since we did this in values, if we change this, instead of having to go to all the different um, all, all the different files to change the values, we just change it here and we avoid errors. And then we can go ahead and deploy. So uh, let's just go over this real quick. So if we didn't have a namespace, we could do the kubectl create namespace and then namespace name. In this case, we already have it, so we're going to do it. Um, then we're going to install the, the chart. I just called it first deployment one dev. You can call it whatever you want. And we're going to deploy this chart, which is this folder. And we're right outside that folder, so we're in the main folder. So that kind of makes sense. We can, this just checks how many pods, uh, the status of the pods and stuff. And this deletes the deployment. You can also have the other stuff, the, uh, uh, the rollback and all the other Helm commands. I just have these ones because these are the ones that I usually use for uh, developing uh, the charts and I can just do F8 and check them out. So let's see what is already there. So as you can see we already have two um, things running with two pods each and this is basically the the ones that were created when we use Azure and Dev Spaces. So we're gonna install and we should it should be installed three of the back end and two of the front end. So let's go ahead and try it out. So it was able to deploy uh, without an error, but that just means that the chart was fine. Doesn't mean that the actual deployment worked. So let's check the pods. So the two that were running, it was they're still running. That's not affected. Uh, but if we see the back end some of them failed so at least one of them failed already so let's run it again so yeah we can see that there's an error pulling that image but that the uh, front end worked so if we want to check what the problem is we can do this we're going to copy it and we can do to describe and pod it'll kind of and you 
like give still this describe pod and the pod name and we can see that it's failing so we can see how it started um, and it tries to get the image from this place and there's an error and it says failed to pull image because and the error that ACR is giving us is that dev coding flamingo cluster does not exist so if we go back to values you can say that I made a mistake it's supposed to be coding flamingo uh, not dev coding flamingo so we can go back I'm just gonna delete the whole thing uh, to show how it deletes everything so if we see get pods it's killing the three pods that we're running and it's gonna let us only with the other ones so let's try it again and we're back to two so let's do an install once again the install succeeded and as you can see it's starting so it's starting the two uh, in the first deployment and the uh, sorry the two front end and the three back end let's try it again and now they're all running thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one